Good morning. I am going to present about uh, lunar elevation, digital elevation models generated from the Chandrayaan 2 optical cameras, whatever currently operating uh, on board. So, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, my presentation overview is like this just introduction to Chandrayaan 2 optical payloads, then, uh, whatever planetary models and whatever generation techniques uh, we are using for the digital elevation model generation. And then few of the results I am going to show. So as you know, terrain mapping camera uh, is one of the optical uh, camera on board Chandrayaan-3. Uh, this is the triplet camera having uh, three sensors, fore, aft, and nadir, gives the images at five meter spatial resolution. And uh, these three cameras uh, having the main aim to give the uh, three stereo pairs there fore aft, aft nadir, and uh, nadir aft. And finally, you, you have to generate from the three stereo images uh, to one digital elevation model. Another one is orbiter high resolution camera, which is a mono uh, acquisition camera, which gives a single image at a time and uh, having highest resolution of 25 centimeter till date of the moon surface, whatever the orbiters are having currently working. And uh, uh, this camera is having the capability to generate the multi-view products, which can be used as a, a stereo images. It, uh, it can be tilted and then see the same area with whatever a stereo angle you want. And this is a, uh, mainly, this uh, works uh, for the lunar poles. This is a low light camera, uh, having the saturation radiance of nearly three milliwatt. And uh, that's why moon surface normally in equatorial region, you can see 14 milliwatts or 15 milliwatts of type of energy is there, but here uh, its saturation radius is three milliwatts. So mainly it has been built for the poles. Then another one is infrared uh, imaging a spectrometer that is a hyperspectral camera. This is a grating based uh, hyperspectral camera having 16 nanometer of the spatial resolution of 80 meter having 250 bands with a swath of 20 kilometer. So TMC specifications, uh, if we see, we have uh, five meter of 100 kilometer, 4,000 detectors in an array in one, uh, one of the sensor, that is four uh, sensor. Nadir similarly, 4,000 array. So every each of the sensor is having 4,000 array in a line. And this is a push broom scanner having uh, focal length of 14 centimeter. And uh, this is the repeat of the terrain mapping camera one, what was uh, there in the Chandrayaan one. But uh, here, uh, the weight and power is quite less. So this is a very uh, compact camera having uh, gives the three views. And uh, whatever the stereo we or triplet we get, one is nadir, another one is plus 25 degree, third one is minus 25 degree. So uh, we have a better B by H ratio of nearly one. Base to height ratio is very important in case of the, if you are using the a stereoscopic technique to generate the digital elevation model. Then uh, we have some SNR improvement facility also there for the polar area. As you know, polar area illuminations are uh, lesser, so we can improve the SNR by whatever the integration time is here, 3.23 millisecond. What uh, does this mean? That one line of the EMC, uh, for or aft or nadir, takes some 3.23 millisecond to get covered. That, that is the integration time. So we can add the, uh, bin the two lines or four lines or eight lines, increase the integration time and uh, get the more, uh, better signal to noise ratio in the case of polar area. It has four exposures depending on the eliminations and a single gain. This is the symmetric of that. Uh, these are the detector planes. Uh, this is the velocity of uh, going towards the uh, and two or wider. And uh, its footprint on the ground is 20 kilometer. And first four uh, images will come, then aft, then nadir. And uh, due to the moon rotation, there is a difference between four to nadir, 60.3 uh, second difference is there. That shifts nearly 56 pixel shift in the across track. 
So that will not 100% you will get the stereo coverage. There is a slight lesser 99.8% type of stereo coverage you will find of the area. And this is a long track stereoscopy. So uh, 20 kilometer in Swat, but in the long track direction, you can go up to 1800 kilometer also in one go. So nearly uh, six lakhs or seven lakhs lines we can capture at the same time. This is our wider high resolution camera uh, having 25 centimeter resolution from 100 kilometer altitude. It is having 12,000 uh, detectors in SWAT direction. And uh, this is a TDI camera having 256 maximum stages and uh, uh, better uh, signal to noise ratio it provides when we use for 256 uh, this one, but depending on the illumination condition, you can select out of the four TDI stages, 64, 128, 192, and 256. If illumination is more, we can select 64 uh, stages. Uh, illumination is lesser, we can go up to 256 uh, stages. And quantization here is eight bit. And whatever detector size we are using, 5.2 micrometer, a spectral range is panchromatic only. And uh, whatever the SNR is uh, near, uh, greater than 50. And in, there are four, uh, seven different integration time, depending on the velocity of the spacecraft, as well as the angles, whatever we are using. Suppose we want to multi, take the multi view of an area, a stereo images, and then what we do in satellite motion in orbit N, we take the image of that. Then after six degree uh, roll tilt, we can cover in the next pass itself that area. So there uh, six degrees very less uh, to just uh, compute the stereo angle. So what we do, we uh, give some pitch angle there because we require the stereoscopic angle angles near to 30 degree or for the moderate terrain to capture. So we give the pitch angle of the 25 degree there and then capture this. So one may be nadir, another one is 25 degree or plus minus five degree and 25 degree. So that type of acquisitions we do in that area where area of interest where we want the studio images. So this is the purely the region of interest based acquisition from the OHRC. So most of the landing sites or coming future landing sites are getting covered through this. This is the elimination pattern. So uh, always we cannot uh, operate our uh, uh, TMC or OHRC cameras because uh, there are some imaging seasons. So for uh, optical cameras, there are prime imaging season of nearly four months and plus polar region we can extend up to one month both sides. So we have six months of the imaging season where the illuminations are adequate due to the sun aspect angle, whatever uh, with the orbital plane is less than 45 degrees. Then only we can get the proper illumination. Otherwise, if it is uh, greater than that, then it is difficult to get the good illumination. So in those times, we operate the SAR sensor, not the optical sensors. So that's why nearly three and a half years of our operation, uh, we have covered nearly 80% uh, uh, of the 70% of the area of the TMC and uh, OHRC only a region of interest best. And IIRS nearly 90% area has got covered. So next one imaging, next imaging season, currently yesterday only it has started. So we are going to cover uh, probably full moon, full, at least polar area. Then what we do in the data processing. So here uh, we take the images and uh, as we know, this is the 2D image of the 3D object, whatever sensor takes. Then uh, whatever raw data comes, a, it suffers from the uh, several sensor level uh, distortions or scene level or platform level. So we correct it like sensor related errors like PRNU, photo response non-uniformity, whatever all detectors uh, are uh, giving not the same response. So in lab, we calibrate it before launch and those, those normalization factor we apply when the images comes to make the uh, uh, same response from all the detectors. So this uh, uh, non-uniformity we, uh, we remove and then scene and platform related whatever geometric uh, errors are there, 
like whatever the attitude and orientation errors are there that we correct through our photogrammetric model, uh, whatever we have our indigenous model. Then these corrected outputs and map projected surface with respect and resample it to get the ortho corrected or geo corrected product. So on the basis of these corrections, we can define radiometric correction, geometric correction and product formatting. That, that product we are following the PDS standards, planetary data system standards followed worldwide. And uh, whatever the corrections we apply on the basis of, we call it, it is raw or level zero image, then RAD or level one, that is a calibrated image, then derived products, that is the level two products, that is the uh, GIS ready product, you can say, it, and uh, it can be directly utilized by the uh, application or uh, science teams. This already I explained. So uh, all the data sets uh, uh, we are putting at the ISSDC. ISSDC is the const um, of, custodian of all Chandrayaan-1, Chandrayaan-2, MOM, whatever planetary missions of ISRO, all data sets are getting deposited there. And uh, those archive products uh, are in PDS format, and those formats can be disseminated from the ISSDC itself. And uh, these... Uh, Whatever we follow, uh, this is long-term archive. This is, uh, we are putting all documentation with the product. In PDS format, uh, there is a provision that you can put all the uh, documents, whatever we have applied some algorithm for the level zero to level one, then for the derived product, whatever we are doing with the stereo image, all algorithms are part of this uh, data system. So anybody can download the raw image and then apply those algorithms and get whatever product we are uh, giving that is correct or not. And whatever the derived products are there, that is the digital elevation model or uh, ortho images or the maps or atlas, all things are getting generated at the POC. The Space Application Center is having identified as one of the payload operation center for the TMC, IIRS and OHRC. There we generate the digital elevation model, qualify it and uh, uh, time to time, uh, we refine our algorithms also based on the whatever uh, data sets we are getting, data-driven algorithms, and then generate the maps, atlases, archival and management of data, and uh, put it back to the dissemination for the data products from the ISSDC. So ISSDC is only the node from where the, you will get the data. This is the imaging geometry. Uh, we call it physical sensor model, uh, we utilize. Here you can see from the uh, look vector, uh, we define the our image point, how it is correlated with our uh, ground point. So it is having the attitude, orientation, and look angle vector, plus the perspective center of the position and position of the ground coordinate. So what it says that image, of, uh, image plane, some feature, uh, perspective center, and the object space of that feature. All three lie in a straight line. That is a collinearity condition. So based on that, uh, that photogrammetry model works that gives us the relation between the object to the image. So this is the overview of the physical sensor model. I'm not going in detail because here, we are, whatever the lunar datums we are using, uh, that is the average radius datum of the moon, uh, in all the reference directions, that is the horizontal or vertical directions then attitude we are using, then uh, payload and spacecraft uh, parameters, then mission parameters, then orbit, and uh, we correlate the image point with the lunar point, and this correlation requires to be defined by the uh, lunar control points, which we are taking from the uh, saline ortho images, uh, since these images have been captured at different illumination. See, most of the TMC images, we are capturing uh, at the better illumination condition. So some of the time, what happens this, uh, whatever references we have, that is of the morning hour or evening hour. So that uh, if you see by eye also, you will not able to match the same object you are capturing uh, in the same area you are capturing through the TMC or the saline. So this much difference is there. So uh, a lunar control point on those areas are not getting matched. So finally, what we did, we have several different, different uh, references also, like Clementine or LRO-WAC, 
everywhere we try to match first match with the saline ortho image and uh, if not matching then go for the clementine or vac uh, and then try to match vac is having several different timing uh, image series so those we are taking and then try to match the lunar control point uh, get the lunar control point and then refine those uh, physical sensor model then coming to a stereo images whatever uh, ohrc is applying that is based on the whatever earlier i shown that uh, orbit one it takes the image in another orbit it takes with the some different pitch angle and roll angle the same area it get covered so this is the simple stereoscopy based uh, a cross track stereoscopy based here in uh, chandrayaan 3 it is a long track stereoscopy based whatever selene in the kagwa whatever they have the terrain camera two uh, cameras there sensors there fore and aft and from there it has, the idea has got captured so the advantage of the three camera is one is nadir so we have uh, the uh, combination four aft aft nadir and uh, then four nadir so three combinations a lot of point cloud you can generate and then whatever the points we generate for the same feature that can be uh, reliable also if it is common in the all three plus if you suppose one of them is not giving the correct one still we can use the two cameras another thing is requirement of the lunar control points here for each of the image you will get a relation with the x and y with the two equations so six equations are there and three unknowns x y z suppose latitude longitude and height are unknowns so you have six equations and three unknowns in case of normal stereo you have four equations and three unknowns so reliability is more there so that's why the artifacts and then blunders also can be reduced through use of the three camera this is the basic formula whatever uh, utilization is there for the stereo images and generating the uh, height of uh, that object from the two this is normally parallax based uh, height computation depending on the vih ratio of the camera This is our uh, DM generation techniques. We have the four aft and nadir image from TMC. This is a TMC case. Uh, we uh, match the uh, through automatic matching. That is the area based and feature based both uh, hybrid model we use here, and then match with uh, taking as a nadir as a reference. Match with four and match with aft. Then later four and aft and. take all the uh, intersection points of this whatever the uh, these things are not matching we can uh, reject it then take the mass conjugate points and reverse also we do like uh, this uh, matching technique first uh, as you know that first we have to take some interest operator interest point you have to generate those interest point you have to apply in other image so that way one side then other side also we do to just uh, get more confidence on those conjugate points and then use the orbit attitude and rates uh, whatever we got from the sensor model then uh, another one we use the whatever earlier i told how we generate our control points we take the nadir image and the reference image of the selene or uh, lro vac or clementine and then match it and then uh, use the photogrammetry point uh, determination using space resection and space intersection do the bundle adjustment and finally generate the on all conjugate point those point cloud we generate the height so we have now latitude longitude and height of uh, large uh, number of points and then we interpolate it and make it the digital elevation model same digital elevation model used for the terrain correction using absolute position and attitude of the camera whatever is refined using this model same has been used to generate the ortho image so registration with the digital elevation model and ortho image is one to one this is the generation uh, approach whatever i have explained this is the indigenous software what uh, we have developed uh, this is the ldem software we call it so here uh, we have all the processes uh, and these processes up to now we have generated nearly 10 tv of data uh, digital elevation model and ortho images uh, using this software in each orbit of nearly 6 lakhs line by 4000 uh, columns uh, nearly 2 hours it takes to generate the digital elevation model you see this is a very computing in intensive process because you have 4000 by 6 lakhs 
three combinations and uh, you have to match all points for each pixel and then finally come out this. So optimization techniques have been used here and 256 core uh, system we are using for this. This is the polar coverage and DM available till date. Uh, uh, this is nearly 106 orbits of the North Pole. Already you can see all most of the area has been covered. These areas are still left. 25% area is left in the North Pole, while South Pole nearly 20% of the area is left. So that we are going to fill in this imaging season of the next three months. And then finally, we will get a digital emission for, model for the entire region. This is the one of the example. This is the Saravai crater, imaged by Chandran to TMC. This is a four Nadir and Aft image. Uh, this is the ortho image, we call it. This is the elevation model. You can see the height here. This is the 3D visualization of the same, where uh, uh, this image has been draped over the digital elevation model, whatever has been generated. Here you can see the crater depth is nearly 1.67 kilometer, while diameter is uh, 8 kilometer. This is one of the example uh, of the uh, ortho image, DEM, its color coding. You can see the height uh, here. Here, we, whatever we generate, uh, we generate the contours also and see it is matching with the features or not. Once we confirm that it is matching with the features there, then only we pass the quality control. And there are other flags like whatever the reference, Lola DEM and other things, we take care that how much deviation is there. So if it is, uh, uh, more than 100 meter or so, we don't consider, we don't pass it in the quality check. And then again, we see where are the problems in the DEM generation, why it has not generated that particular orbit, the correct DEM. So these are the uh, qualification uh, phase activity we do. Then we can generate the Enagali fancy through the glasses, the 3D. And uh, these are the ortho image coverage of the TMC. This is this type of uh, flyway also we can generate. Then uh, this is the Chandrayaan 1 TMC data. Here, difference between this and this is here the resolution was 10 meter because 200 kilometer after three months of operation of Chandrayaan 1, it has uh, the orbit was raised to 200 kilometer. So, from this is nearly 10 meter type of resolution of uh, the pixel, while here it is 5 meter. So, that's why we have not combined still both. At 10 meter, we are able to combine both and we are generate up to nearly 20 meter of the digital elevation model of nearly 90% of area of the moon surface currently. But since we are five meter, we are uh, ensuring. So five meter once we will get, then this area will be covered nearly 100%. This is one of the example of the use of the digital elevation model done by one of our colleagues, Dr. Ayasharya. Here uh, you can see one of the wrinkle ridge has been mapped using the DM and ortho image. So uh, this is a semantic geological, uh, geomorphological studies. Whatever the vertical offset, that can easily be visible and uh, accountable from this. So a stress age of those, uh, this is a dorsa gaiki wrinkle ridge. In that area, they, uh, he has mapped and characterized this area fully. And uh, on paper is also uh, in this account. These are the accuracy, whatever we got from the spacecraft, you can see up to 2.5 kilometer type of deviations are there in the along track positions. Across track, it is nearly uh, 600 to 800 meters. After correction, we are getting within uh, uh, 10 to 20 meters. Few cases, it is hardly 100 meters. But 10 to 20 meters, we are able to model its position. So that way, it is a nearly very good accuracy we are achieving through the TMC. This is the one of the comparison why we require the TMC DEM or any surface DEM. Because you can see here Lola DEM, this is 30 meter interval. You can see there is a big crater in the image. While this one is missing here. Even all the small craters are getting captured in the TMC DEM. Whatever uh, that is not available in the Lola DEM. So that's why uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, digital elevation model is quite useful in getting the minute feature as well as some big, why this has happened when I have gone inside the deeper because the orbit to orbit deviation is one to four kilometer. 
So due to that, uh, this is the nearly one kilometer of the crater. So whatever the four spots of the laser, that has not gone, the orbit has not passed through this area. That's why there are no points are observed. This is the uh, differencing method through differencing method. We have quantified one of the area uh, where you can see the deviation. This is maximum deviation is uh, plus minus 20 meter. These things are uh, between the uh, TMC and uh, Lola dam. This is the one, also one of the example of the, how the uh, small features are getting depicted in the uh, TMC DM. This is uh, one thing also we are uh, carrying out currently. Whatever uh, TMC DM, suppose due to elimination, uh, shadow area like for PSR and other areas, uh, entire area we are not getting the points. So there are some gaps in between, like these white colors are there due to the shadow. These things have not got covered. So what we are taking, we are fusing it with the Lola DM. Whatever Lola points are there, we are taking that and uh, interpolating with respect to the whatever TMC orbits are there. And then preparing this type of the uh, entire area DM. So we enhance the DM quality as well as the whatever the void area are there that are also getting free. This is the one of the example uh, for the uh, Later catalog, we can generate up to TMC, up to five pixels we can generate from the OHRC or TMC or WAC also. Same algorithm has been applied. This is a deep learning based algorithm and technique we have applied. And we have got uh, whatever accuracy for the, uh, whatever the additive or subtractive errors are there, that is up to 92% of the uh, craters we are able to. And this is very fast technique to generate the uh, crater catalog. This is one of the example of the DM generated from the OHRC multi-view data sets where two images has been taken. These are whatever S has written. This means these studios are available for the South Polar area of the moon surface through the OHRC. So these areas already have the studio pairs and uh, generated the DMs and these are available. This is the one of the landing site. Some question was there earlier that where we are going to land. This is a uh, minus 69.3 uh, degree and 32 degree uh, longitude, 32 degree east longitude. And this is the area, this is the DM generator from the OHRC. This area has been fully characterized and found that 88% of the area is nearly hazard free. Hazard means whatever we are telling about slope, like slope should not greater than 10 degree. Then there should not be shadow uh, from any of the object. Then uh, accessibility to the earth communication. So those things uh, have been taken care of, those hazards we meet, then 88% of the area of this 4.2.4 kilometer, we are the safe for landing. This is the one of the visualization of the one of the area Leibniz plateau of the moon surface. These are the currently coverage of the OHRC South Polar coverage. Total 65 uh, region of interest have been covered. Out of that South Pole, South Pole, nearly 45 areas have been covered. You near to Pole also, you can see these areas are already covered by the OHRC. This is the, uh, these days CR1 and SR1, Sackleton Crater Rim and uh, Connecting Ridge, both are the Artemis as well as the Lupex, as well as ESA landing sites. These are the uh, sites already identified for the uh, future landing missions. So uh, you can see this is the LRO NAC image at full resolution. This is the OHRC image of the same area. This is 60 centimeter, this is uh, 30 centimeter. Same thing is for the uh, Sackleton rim also. So this type of uh, uh, clarity is there in the OHRC image. So in summary, I can tell uh, that nearly 65% of the polar DMs are available with TMC uh, today. Then uh, accuracy is nearly 100 meter in planimetry and 40 meter in height, depending on the references used. And uh, five meter DM we can also generate for the area or region of interest from the TMC on request basis. And uh, improvement always is there for the DM. Uh, always we are uh, in the process of improvement of our accuracy. And then LTA uh, contains the elevation model and the ortho images at ISSPC. And that can be downloaded from the Pradhan side on the ISSTC website.
that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amita. In the interest of time, we can take maybe one question. Okay, so I don't see anything. The, so these the gaps are because of the lack of orbit. Yeah, yeah, orbit. not acquired currently. So the, how, how are the orbits designed? Are they not designed to scan the entire region eventually? No, actually it is a 20 kilometer swath. Yeah. So from uh, north to south, if it comes, it will 20 kilometer at a time. So, and then 16 kilometer orbit to orbit, there is 16 kilometer gap. Pole, it will be lesser. Equatorial, it is 16 kilometer. So due to that 16 kilometer gap, then again, it will take. So that's why this 16 kilometer, every time it should come. So every six months, we have to again, uh, reorient that to take from a particular area. So it is not like that, that I want this orbit. So then we have to give some tilt that we don't want in case of TMC. We want the systematic coverage, whatever Nadir is looking, it should look Nadir, whatever 25 degrees looking. If you tilt that, then that area will not uh, look at the same uh, angles, whatever we want for our students. You are using some of the machine learning techniques to sort of upscale the low resolution areas. Yeah, that, uh, that and, is... Uh, so, for example, have you tested, for example, once you have a higher resolution data, how did, how well did this upscaling? Yeah, actually, out? sometime back, our headquarters has organized one program through the IIT, one competition, mm -hmm. that uh, challenge that uh, using OHRC, you have to improve the spatial resolution of the TMC. TMC is 5 meter, OHRC is uh, 30 centimeter, 25 centimeter. So uh, uh, results uh, have come, few of the results, but uh, whatever we find that maximum up to four times only you can improve. Like five meter, you can do 1.25 meter. At least a pixel should be visible. Otherwise you cannot build the topology of the craters inside that right. at high resolution. That crater will look like very good at uh, 16 times uh, uh, this one super resolution, but the crater topology from where it will take it will not, then you should have a very large amount of uh, training to the data. And uh, that is very difficult. Means that's why up to four times we can do five meter can be one meter, up to one meter we can rescale. Similarly, this uh, 30 centimeter we can relate up to six, uh, six or seven uh, centimeter type of resolution. So at least a half of the pixel or one fourth of the pixel should be pixel, some impression should be there. Then only you can use these techniques. That is our experience, huh? that uh, people are working. So. Okay, thank you, thank you Amitabh.